When I was around 23 years old, I faced major rejection. I mean, quite literally, I was face to face with someone who directly told me that I was a waste of time. Have you ever had a vision of something that you wanted for yourself, but you let it go, either because of yourself or someone else convincing you that you're just not good enough or you don't have what it takes? Did you let go of a dream because you decided it wasn't possible? Have you ever caught yourself saying, I wish, I wish I could go back to school or I wish I could find a new job? There's a very important lesson that I missed 20 years ago, but now I get it and it's changed everything for my success. Today, I'll be sharing with you how I'm reaching new highs with this one very important lesson. Are you ready to shift your mindset and tap into the opportunities that are waiting for you right now? Let's go. Welcome to the Creating Clarity Podcast, where we talk about clearing the fog, shifting our focus, and uncovering opportunities that are hidden right in front of us. I'm your host, Dr. Liz Aguirre. Before I begin, I must emphasize that this work is separate from my professional medical work and does not represent medical advice or opinions of any specific organization. Hi, welcome back everybody. I am glad you are joining me today because I am so excited to share a simple yet profound lesson that I learned through coaching. It also happens to be one of the most important lessons I've learned recently. But then again, I find myself saying that a lot lately, so don't be surprised if you hear me say that about something else later. Anyway, here it is. You get the results you wanted, or the lesson you needed. I'm starting to see more and more lessons that I didn't know I needed. However, if you're not in the right mindset, you'll miss the lessons. And that was what was happening to me for years. That's partially why this podcast was even born. When you shift your mindset to see the good, you're able to see the good when it presents itself. And sometimes very insignificant events can have profound impacts either immediately or somewhere down the line. A failure is not a failure. It's a lesson in disguise. I've started training myself to ask, what can be learned from this perceived failure? Here's a recent lesson that I've learned over the past few years. Take the advice of people who lift you up and support your goals. When Negative Nelly gives you advice, see if there's anything you can learn from it and improve yourself and then let go of the rest. Because I've learned this, I can look back at events that have happened to me in the past and finally start to see the lessons that I should have gotten a long time ago. This lesson actually would have been really helpful to me 20 years ago. I wish I had someone feeding me these thoughts. I started my weekly newsletter just about a month ago, and I discovered that I love writing. I'm 44 years old, and I didn't know that about myself. If you didn't know about my um, newsletter, by the way, you can sign up on my website, lizagarymd.com forward slash newsletter. But anyway, through my writing, I have learned a few lessons. Number one, I learned that I can reinvent myself in ways I never dreamed possible. Or is it dreamt? Maybe it's dreamt. Dream, dreamt. (laughs) I don't know, but that word is funny and it totally relates to what I'm going to share with you today. It ties to lesson number two, which is that writing shed my 20-year belief that I was not good at reading and writing. And then lesson number three, it helped me clearly see how negative Nelly 20 years ago planted a seed of doubt that grew into an ugly vine that literally suffocated me. It squeezed me so tight that there was no room to even consider the possibility of writing. The negative Nelly story actually happened when I was secretly making the decision to apply to medical school. I hadn't told anybody because I didn't have top grades and I wasn't even sure that I had money to submit the applications. I decided that I would work on trying to improve my chances and I started volunteering at a hospital. 
after a few weeks of rounding with that one physician, he seemed impressed with how eager I was to learn and how quickly I absorbed information. And he would comment on that because we would see a patient that was similar to one we had seen the week before. And I remember what he had taught me. So he made this assumption about me that I was super smart and based on his observation, he was positive that I was top of my class and he pulled some strings and called an old friend and made these connections to talk to this guy who had ties to the medical school. And he told this guy, hey, you need this girl in your medical school. She's awesome. You got to have her. You got to meet her. I, I really don't know what he said. I'm assuming that's along the lines of what he was said, because when I arrived to talk to this guy, he had very high expectations of me. His first question was not about me or my experience or my goals or why I wanted to go into medicine. His very first question was, how did you do on the MCAT? For my non-medicine listeners, the MCAT is a medical college ad admission test. And the scoring, the, the highest score you could get was a 45. There were three sections worth 15 points each. I don't remember what the three sections were, but one of them was along the lines of reading comprehension. Anyway, the first question the guy asked me was, how did you do on the MCAT? And I was honest. I said, I didn't do very well. I, I didn't do good on the reading part. I was fixated on that one little piece because that was the lowest score. But what I didn't realize is I didn't do good on any of the parts. So he asked me what I scored and I said a 13. And then he looked up and you could tell he was initially pleased because clearly everything he had been told was correct. He said, well, that's not bad at all. What did you score on the other parts? And that's when my heart really started to beat fast and I could feel like it in my throat. And I said, no. No, you don't understand. My total score was a 13. I got a three on the reading and then a five on the other two sections. What happened after that has literally been imprinted in my mind for the last 20 years. I still remember where I was sitting, how his office was situated, what it looked like, and most importantly, that look on his face because he was like almost mad at me. And he said very sternly, I wish you hadn't wasted our time. You could have just started with that and not waste our time because I can tell you this is not the place for you. And it literally took every ounce of strength I had to not break down and cry. I didn't. I didn't cry. But probably in the most quivery voice ever, I said, I'm sorry I wasted your time. I do appreciate the experience and I appreciate your input, but I've been working really hard for this and I'll be applying to medical school anyway. If I don't get in this year, then I'll apply next year too. And then he proceeded to say, well, you can waste your money, but my opinion is you're not going to get in and you're better off waiting until you can improve that score. That is what I would recommend. So that last piece was literally like a dagger because every penny that I spent, it was a very expensive process for me. I was already working two jobs toward the end of undergrad to earn the money that I needed to apply to medical school, but I knew it wasn't going to be enough. I knew I was going to have to take out loans to apply and so for him to say that I was wasting my money, it was really, really hard on me. So I told you this big, long story, but it's important because I now can look back at the lessons that I did not see back then. Now, I'll tell you, I applied and I got into medical school with that super low score. But here's the lesson. That man's opinion was just that, an opinion. I applied and found someone else who had a different opinion of me. Number two, he was wrong. I did get it. And this takes me back to my original lesson. Take the advice of people who lift you up and support your goals and let go of everything else. I can tell you that's not what I did. Instead, I carried his face and his comments around with me for 20 years. And I thought that this part of me was flawed and useless. I had a lot of grit and I knew how to accomplish a ton. But when it came to reading and writing, no, no way. And as a result, I'm just learning 20 years later how much I love this. And when I plan my podcast, I sit down and I start writing and I see what pours out into the screen. And then I write until the words stop flowing. And then I pick and, I pick and choose the pieces that I'm going to share with the world. So the last lesson I'll share with you is this. You never know where life is going to take you. Be open to the journey. If it's something that resonates with you and it's aligned with who you are and what you want to do, then don't be afraid to go with it. 
just go for it. I know it's scary. I know putting your out self out there and doing something new is hard, but just do it. How did I get to this place today where I'm recording this podcast? Just six months ago, I had no idea that I would be here. But a few years ago, I discovered that I loved speaking. And I started speaking on small stages. I started speaking at work and just helping um, share the knowledge that I had. And more recently, I've been fortunate enough to have some national stages. But what I really loved about speaking is that I could see the immediate impact. I could see the light bulbs come on when I said something that really resonated with the audience. I felt fulfilled when the audience members would come up to me afterward and tell me how my words impacted them. It made me feel like I was really contributing and helping others in a very powerful way. And then I started getting random emails saying things like, I just finished my first marathon and it's all because of that talk you gave, or I went back to school because of you, or I applied for this new job and I got it because of you. And then I started to think, wow, I'm really resonating with people. They're like really being helped by what I'm saying. So Long story short, I fast forward, I asked myself, what can I do to expand and help other people? There are so many people who will never hear me. I'm I'm hired by organizations and employers, and there's a lot of people out there, and they're never going to hear what I have to say. And so how can I get to them? And long story short, my newsletter and my podcast were born. And I continue to grow and evolve, and I'll continue to be open to the opportunities that present themselves. But along the way, as I put myself out there, I know I'm going to fail. I know that I'm going to go to uncomfortable areas and things are not going to go as planned. And so if you have not listened to my very first episode, Messy Middle, I encourage you to go back and listen to that first. But I tell you all of this because anytime we have a perceived failure, there's always a lesson that can be learned from that. I'll end today's episode by reminding you of the big lesson, and that is to take the advice of people who are going to lift you up and support your goals. And when that negative person comes into your life, because they will, and they might have very good intentions, they might be projecting their own fears on you, and that's okay. But the important thing is to see if you can learn anything from what is said and see if you can improve yourself in some way, and the rest, just let it go and keep moving forward. You are not going to be perfect. You are going to make mistakes. And that does not mean that you are not going in the right direction. It actually probably means the opposite, that you are doing exactly what you should be doing to grow. All right. Thanks for joining me. I hope you found this helpful and I will see you again next week. Thanks for listening. Make sure you hit subscribe so that you won't miss the next episode. And if you like this episode, please share it with a friend and give me a five-star review so that I can reach more people. I'll see you next week. Disclaimer, the views and opinions shared here are for information and educational purposes only. They do not serve as a medical or professional advice. They do not represent any academic, medical, or professional institution or organization. If you found this helpful, don't forget to leave a five-star review. Thank you.